everyone, it's Kedar and Read Together, and today we're going to be reading a really fun book called Do Not Open This Crate in the Cat in a Hat series. I can't wait. Let's get right to it. Do Not Open This Crate by Cat in the Hat, the movie. Chapter 1 Bored, bored, bored. Conrad and Sally were bored. Stop picking on me, said Sally. I can't help it, said Conrad. There's nothing else to do and no one else to pick on. Except me, said a strange voice. Fault children jumped. Who said that? A figure came in through the doorway. Conrad started. He had never seen such a big cat or such a big hat. Since your sitter's asleep and your mom is away, I came here for fun, said the cat. So let's play. You came to the wrong house, Conrad told him. There's no fun here. The cat tapped his hat. A doctor's headlamp popped out. Say, ah, he told Conrad. Then he looked down his throat. I see the problem, said the cat. You have a case of the worst day ever, fresh out of the imagination. But I can fix that. The cat ran out the front door. He came back with a very big crate. What's that? asked Sally. A jack-in-the-box? He opened the lid. Out sprang thing one and thing two. It's more of a thing-in-a-box, said the cat. Nobody's bored once these two pop out. Ah, uh, yeah, said Conrad. What is it they do? Wait and see, said the cat. Are you ready, thing one? Thing two? Chapter two. Thing one was ready. He picked up the closest object and threw it to Tink Thu. Tink Thu threw it back. Sally liked to play catch, and she would have played too. But they were throwing Mom's best vase. See, they're throwing Mom's best vase. Stop that, she cried. She ran from Thing 1 to Thing 2, then from Thing 2 to Thing 1, but she could not catch the vase. The cat slapped his knee. Hot dog, he said. A game of keep away. Conrad didn't want to play keep away or help his sister. He wanted to look inside the crate. He knelt on the floor, then he lifted a lid. A strange ooze seeped out. The ooze slid across the floor, then curled around a chair. The chair's legs wobbled. Pop, 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 pop. The legs had grown feet. Big pink feet. Conrad was amazed. What would happen next, he wondered. Conrad couldn't wait to see. Chair grew feet is what they're saying. Bam! The cat slammed the crate slid down. The ooze disappeared and so did the feet. Now the chair was just a chair again. Why did you do that? Conrad asked the cat. This crate is no toy, said the cat. Excuse me. It's a doorway between my world and yours. And that door must stay shut. So whatever you do, do not open this crate. Just to make sure, the cat snapped on a crab lock and slapped on a warning. Conrad did not like locks or warnings, so when the cat turned away, he crept back to the crate. He pulled out a paper clip, then he knelt down to work. This is chapter 3, by the way. Back and forth, he turned the clip, this way and that. It tickled the crab lock's stomach. The crab giggled. Then, click, the lock opened. Conrad reached to lift the lid and... No, don't, cried his sister. Conrad froze. Was Sally talking to him? He turned to look. Woo! It was just that stupid keep-away game. Thing one threw the vase right out the window, and Conrad's dog, Nevins, jumped out after it. Sally ran to the window. The vase lay on the ground in a hundred pieces. Mom will never forgive us, she cried. Nevins barked. Woof! It's all right, Nevins. It's not, Sally said. It's not your fault. Come back in. But Nevins didn't come back in. Instead, Nevins ran this way and that way. Then he ran right out of the yard. Conrad raced to the window. Nevins, come back! But Nevins was gone. And that's a doggone shame, said the cat. We have to catch him, said Conrad. Agreed, said the cat. So he opened the back door and led the chase. Sally followed. <sighs> so did Conrad, forgetting all about the unlocked crate behind him. Oh no, the ooze is 
getting out. Chapter 4. When Conrad, Sally, and the cat returned with Nevins, they all stood in the doorway and started <laughs> and stared. The house looked different, very different. In fact, thought the cat, it looked an awful lot like the inside of the crate. What happened? cried Sally. The cat frowned at Conrad. My crate is still locked, isn't it? he asked. Tur Conrad turned bright red. I picked the lock, he confessed. Oh, brother, said Sally. We're in real trouble now. Very carefully, they walked into the house. The hall carpet hung like a rope and a bridge in midair. Below them, book birds flew by. The floor rippled and rolled in orange waves. Sally sneezed. Achoo! The carpet bridge swayed and swung, then nearly fell off. Okay, I messed up, Conrad told the cat. Now how do I fix it? Simple, said the cat. We find this crate you open and we shut it. Cat's really mad. He's yelling. They moved toward the living room. Holy cow, gasped Conrad. The chairs, tables, and sofas were huge. It's like this is, they're all bigger than these three. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. The walls moved in and out as if they were breathing, and they could see the ceiling. There's the crate, cried Conrad. In the corner, the crate was rocking back and forth. Gooey ooze dribbled down the sides. Its lid was wide open. Sally made them stop. I hear someone yelling, she said. Chapter 5 What's going on over here? yelled Lawrence Quinn at the front door. I heard noises. Conrad bit his lip. Mr. Quinn was their neighbor. He didn't like kids, and yelling was his favorite sport. Mr. Quinn took one look at the house and blew his top. Look at this place, he yelled. I'm going to call your mother right now. Where's your phone? Mr. Quinn ran into the swaying carpet bridge and slipped right off. I'll be back, he shouted. Wow, that was a long way down, said Conrad. Come on, said Sally. The crate. Just then something rose up from inside the crate. Up, up, up it went. Larger and larger it grew, until it towered over them like a giant parade balloon. Uh-oh, said Sally. It was Mr. Quinn, only now he was twenty feet tall. Sally tried to run, but the giant Quinn grabbed her. Where do you think you're going, he roared. Conrad, cried Sally. Help! Chapter 6 Conrad had to fight the giant Quinn. But how? He noticed a flashlight nearby and reached for it, but Quinn grabbed it first. Is this what you wanted? said Quinn. It's just a stupid flashlight. He tossed it back to Conrad and laughed. A word of advice, said the cat. Get some imagination, fast. Imagination? Conrad wondered what the cat meant. Then he knew if the cat's magic crate could change the whole house, maybe it could change other things too. Uh, just a flashlight, Conrad said. He flipped on the beam. Or is it a baseball bat? At that, the beam took the shape of a giant baseball bat. Conrad swung. The beam whacked Quinn in the leg. Ow! Quinn cried out and dropped Sally. Sally fell through the air. I She screamed. Conrad bounced onto the sofa and sprang up to grab her. Your ride is here, he said. He clicked on the flashlight. The beam became a fire pole. Down they slid to safety. That's it, Quinn yelled. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Better think fast, Conrad told himself. He saw a painting on the wall and grabbed it. All aboard, he shouted. The train and the painting roared right out of the frame. It headed straight for Quinn and scooped him up. Then it chugged right back into the painting. Next stop, next door, and that's where you belong, said Conrad. He hung the painting back on the wall. The cat smiled and said, Well, that certainly shows you the danger of having a one-track mind. So that's the train, like Quinn got 
holding the train and then it came inside of the painting. Pretty magical, right? Chapter 7. Let's hurry up and shut that crate, Sally told Conrad. Mom will be home soon. They each grabbed one end of the crate lid. One, two, three, said Conrad. Close it, said Sally. Together they slammed the lid down tight. Then Conrad clicked the lock. Stand back, said the cat. Suddenly a giant roar filled the air. A big funnel cloud rose up. It grabbed chairs, tables, lamps, and books. Everything started flying over their heads. Finally, the funnel was sucked back into the crate. It rattled one last time. Then everything was still. Wow, everything is back to normal, said Sally. Then she pointed to the coffee table. Even Mom's vase. The broken vase was fixed. It looked as good as new. Thank God. Hold your applause, said the cat. I'm a shy guy. The cat saw thing one and thing two. They were peeking from the cor from around the corner. The coast is clear, he called to them. Come out, it's not. Come on out, it's time to go. Where are you going, asked Sally. My work here is done, said the cat. Unless you two are still bored. Because if you care, I'll just... Because if you are, I'll just open the crate again. Conrad looked at Sally. No way, they said together. Then thing one and thing two lifted the crate and carried it out. Oh, and Conrad, said the cat, just remember one thing. The next time you want to unlock a crate that says, do not open. Yes, said Conrad, I may not be here to help. I remember, promised Conrad. And if he doesn't remember, said Sally, I'll remind him. Good, said the cat. Then he tipped his tall hat and he waved a goodbye. And Conrad and Sally breathed a very big sigh. Thank you so much for watching this read together with me. I hope you have an awesome day. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment about what's your favorite story. I might even do it next. Thank you and bye.